What the goal of this workshop is, is for you to become more empathetic to people who have strange beliefs, all right? Now, this is not to confront people. It is not to have, um, uh, you may not convince them, but what is happening, and I think this is, this is me, is that there are people in your life, and I want you in your brains right now to think of a person in your life who, you don't have to tell anybody, who is somebody you like that you have to have regular contact with. A coworker, an in-law, a sibling, a father-in-law, a crazy uncle. No, somebody that is, somebody that's a neighbor that has odd beliefs, okay? Think of that person and use that person throughout this exercise I'm gonna give you. Use that person in your mind. It's somebody you like, it's somebody you need to have regular contact with. You're gonna interact with them for years and you know that. So it's not somebody you could just walk away from and say, oh my gosh, that's ah. Uh. No, it's somebody who's gonna be raising your nieces and nephews or whatever. So somehow you have to figure out how are you gonna be able to have conversations with this person that sometimes are awkward and weird, all right? Thinking of that, everybody's got somebody in their mind, I hope. <laughs> See, I knew you would all have somebody in your mind. What's gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run you through a scenario that is very odd, and I think there's only maybe two or three people here who, who know the answer to what I'm gonna be talking about. So don't shout it out if you go along, and those people who already know, say nothing, because I don't want anybody, to, I wanna surprise you. So what's going on is you have this friend in your mind. Okay, so this woman, ha uh, I'm gonna say Olivia. Anybody know Olivia? No, Olivia's here, okay. Olivia is my contact in my mind. I'm just coming up with that off, off of the blue. Anybody watching this? I don't know anybody named Olivia. So. We'll go with Olivia Benson. Who's that? The character from SVU. Mm -hmm. What's that? Texas. I don't watch TV. I'm spending my time editing Wikipedia. <laughs> Movies. Right, yeah. Well, no, this is okay to interrupt. So I want you to think about becoming the person that when Olivia, or whoever is in your mind, has a question about a serious topic that they feel comfortable coming to you and asking that question. Okay, that is your goal. And the way to get there is to have conversations with them about odd things and have great interactions with them so that whenever they have a serious question, now can give me some ideas of what is a serious, like, oh my gosh, we gotta deal with this right now question. What would be something, some, let's see some shout outs. Oh, we have a microphone? Oh my gosh, how official. Okay, come on, you guys. If you had a person in your life that was about to do something that was really awful and you need to deal with it right now, like not like somebody believes in a flat earth. That's not going to hurt them today. But what would, hurt, what would be that thing that you have to intervene right now? How about my, I just got this message that if I don't give this person like $10,000, I'm at the bank right now. <laughs> like I'm going to, like, no, seriously. Oh, they're, your they're friend. Saying this, they're telling me I need to give them this money right now. They're going to come take my house. They were threatening to arrest me. Like I'm at the bank and I'm about to do this. Right. Okay. So in other words, they're falling for a scam. Yeah. One of the, one of the either romance scams, there's zillions of scams out there. So your friend has called you and said, oh my gosh, what do I do? The FBI is on my case. I have to withdraw this money. And the bank tellers don't want to give me this money because they're telling me it's, what do I do, what do I do? Oh my gosh, I'm about to lose my children. So you've got a friend in an emergency situation. You need to be able to, to give them good advice. Now, or can somebody come up with another scenario? Rob? Robert? Yes, my neighbor is about to stop um, the actual medical treatments for cancer of their mother to bring her to Mexico to get some special treatment down there. Well, so Mexico does have cancer what? treatment, but, but a lot, there are a lot of cancer quacks lighting up on the border because people are bringing their family to these, to these quacks. I know that's, that's the, yeah, it's pretty bad down there. Anybody else have something else? Join a cult. Join a cult, but they don't. But people don't join cults. They join a, a uh -huh. they join a a, a project that's going to save the world. But you know it's Scientology, or you know it's this, or you know it's that. Right? Exactly. So you know they're like, oh, they're love bombing me. Everybody loves me. You know. First question is, um, how are you feeling right now? 
and who's talking to you? Who's, who's communicating with you? Who is this person? Who? Who's sending you, who sent you the email? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how you would address it. But so you ask them how they're feeling to make them aware of their own emotions right. at the moment. And we'll, and we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But, but so, so there are times in your life there are going to be emergency situations that need to be dealt with right now. So my, my, this workshop, what it should do is you're setting it up. So how do, does it happen? Why are you the person they call? You want to be the person they call when they have that emergency and say, oh my gosh, my hair is on fire, what do I do? And the only way to get to that point is to have respectful conversations with them before about things so they know that when they reach out to you, you're not gonna laugh in their face, you're not gonna do these things. So if somebody was, so what are some examples of things that people do, possibly in our community, when you hear a really ridiculous thing, I mean, like, what are what are the body languages we do? So let me see some body languages. What do you do? We're rolling the eyes, throw a potato at them. Somebody tells you some like ridiculous thing, like what else? Cross our arms. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? Only an idiot would believe that. Exactly. Eye rolling, he had a great eye roll back there. Uh, what, what, what other things do we do? We say, we say stuff that's really kind of mean too, right? Do we ever say like, like you, you said, know you should know better, what an idiot, how could you do this? I mean, what are you doing, that's a cold, I mean, you know? We say these things and what do you think the person feels when you say stuff like that? Do you think it changes their mind? So why do we do that? It's not gonna. It's not gonna change their mind. It's gonna end the conversation, and they're not gonna have conversations with you later when it's really important. So if they say to you, "Hey, I think there's a comet. Uh, I think there's a, a UFO flying behind a comet out there," you don't cross your arms, roll your eyes, and say, "What is wrong with you? How are you an idiot? I mean, have you ever gone to call? Um, no wonder you dropped out of school." Blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, you see these posts on on social media, and you're it, it, like. It's so belittling. Why do we do that? It's not going to have. It's not going to solve any arguments. It's not going to win you any favors. And the person will never speak to you again about anything. And you may save their. You may save their life, their child's life, their animal's life. Something else could happen to them later, and you've lost it. You blew it. Okay. So now, now what we're going to do is, what are some of the behaviors that we would say? Like he said, he had a good one. So when somebody comes to you with a weird thing, you say. Well, that's interesting. Who is it who's calling you up, right? Well, you, first you address their emotions, your feeling right now. Yeah, how do you feel right now? Is it something, are they... How they feel right now. And then you say, uh, who, who sent you that email? Yeah, that one's very angry. The idea is who's talking to me right now. It's the FBI. Why do you think it's... Did they send you the email? Well, I don't know. I'm confused. They're going to take my kids away from me. My house is going to be repossessed. Yeah, what is, the, what is the little? So best practices, you, would, you have conversations with them. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm picking a very odd subject for you, okay? Hopefully none of you guys know what this is. All right, so now imagine your friend, Olivia, or whoever it is, has come to you with their cell phone. And they've said at your coworker's office, or you're at work, or whatever, and they said to you, check this out. Oh my gosh. I had this mark on my shoulder, thigh, neck. You're laughing. Do you know what this is? You're, you're out. So, so they sh there. Here's the here's my here's my picture. So it's not on them right now, live right now. This is. It, you guys might not be able to see it, but there are four line red line five red lines here. Here is like a, a circle with like these things on here and this is like sort of a faded circle and there's like a circle over here. They're, they're kind of like a burn, but they're kind of like a pressure mark and they're just showing it to your phone. So if you can't really see it really well, that's kind of how bad it would be on their phone probably. So this has already like been on their body for a couple weeks or it was a couple weeks ago and they're showing you because they don't know what it is, okay? So this is, so I want you to tell me, let's shout out here, 
what are some of the things that your friend has, has told you? What is this? Like, what kind of questions? You know the answers. No, no, I'm not. You can't tell them that. <laughs> what kinds of questions do you ask them about? Yes. Are, are they claiming that this happened naturally? I don't know. I woke up one morning and it was on me. Mm -hmm. Look at this. This is weird. What is that? Religious yeah. Thing. The psychologists will always tell you never argue with their beliefs as if they're, they're wrong. You just draw them out and have them articulate what they're thinking or feeling. But, it, but all I'm asking you right now is what is this thing on my body I found? For the recording. Did you wake up with this on? Like, did yeah. It, like, I just I was getting happened? dressed and I saw this on me and I I don't know how I got this on me. <laughs> Jeff. Uh, I would ask them, is there if if they woke up with it, then I would ask them, is there something that could have been in bed with you that you like a pressure thing you leave right, on something, something something that that was in bed with you that has well, that pattern? Well, it took it or it can took you a think couple of weeks to fade, so I don't think it was a pressure. Well, bruises can take a couple of weeks to fade. It wasn't a bruise. <laughs> I'm, I'm acting as okay. the, yes. the person, obviously. Yeah. Did it itch? Did it, like, do you really not yeah. there yet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, how did this make you feel? Like, That's a good okay? one. Yeah. Are you okay? Is it stressful? Whatever. Okay, so you're asking all these questions, right? As good skeptics or as good people who are communicating with a person who wants to have um, a conversation with the person, these two over here are going to be, you're, you're going to be separated here in a minute. Me? He's the trouble. Do I need to pull potato? Do I need to pull potato? I love these people. But they're, they're whispering to me, each other because they think they know the answer. So, so, so the idea is to have a conversation with the person that is respectful you're, you're asking them about what it could be. You're not belittling them. You're not rolling your eyes because you genuinely don't know yourselves, right? So some of the ideas might be, have you had it checked out by a doctor? You, and they would probably say, no, it just kind of faded. It didn't hurt. Is it a burn? Like, did it, did it leave like a, a scab? No, not really. How long have you had it for? How do you think you got it? When did it appear? Those are the kind of questions you're asking for them. But at no point are you asking him any kind of question that's going to involve eye rolls or crossing arms, right? OK. So now I'm going to give you another slide. Now I want to ask you to look at this slide. And hopefully you don't know who this person is. And I want you to tell me, OK, now this is Olivia or your coworker or whoever it is, has come to you. And now you know that your friend has some strange beliefs. You just know that because of interactions you've had with them in the past, your coworker, your in-law, or whatever. You know they have some odd beliefs. So when they came to you with this thing on their skin, or the fo photo of it, they didn't say to you, um, they didn't connect it to weird beliefs, but you know that it's likely to go there, because that's the kind of personality they have that you've encountered them in the past. So they tell you, they say, hey, I was um, scrolling around on the internet trying to find like what these things on my body might be. And I came across this video. And this guy was on this video. Now, from their perspective only, tell me what it is you see on this screenshot I took. I'm not gonna, sh I'm not gonna show you the video, you guys, thankfully. But what is it that's on the screen? What do you see? They don't know any different. So what do you see? Someone making an extraordinary claim. I see no. somebody that's a UFO believer and encounters with them. What, do you, what does it look like? What do you see on the picture? Thank you. OK, he's holding. He's got, he's got probably two books. It's hard to see there. What else? What else do you see? Space landscape behind him because there's like another planet, rocky stuff. It doesn't look of Earth. Okay, it looks really cool. And it's All like right. UFO okay. font. <laughs> uh, UFO font. What else? Yeah. What else you see? It looks like UFO font that could potentially be like Star Trek. 
What about it? What about that cool name? Doesn't he sound like? Doesn't he sound like he's French or something? Exotic. Yeah, exotic. Aren't the French smart? You know. Oh my God, he's been all over the world. I've never been out of Raleigh, North Carolina. And so this guy must be really learned. So from the viewpoint of that person who's watching this video who knows nothing else, this guy looks scholarly. Now here's a screenshot from the video. What do you see? Tell me what that looks like to you. Yeah. That, there is a there is a lectern in front of him. So he must be an audience. So there's an audience who's at a conference of some kind, so there's yeah, some legitimacy sure. to what he's saying. What about the man himself? Obviously an expert. Oh, look at that. He's got a vest on, white shirt. Yeah. He's older. Yeah. We know old people are smart, right? Everybody here. White male. <laughs> white male. I mean, let's just you know. Gray hair. I mean, you know, if you got to if you got to the point where you've got your gray hair, you got some smarts. It's got a water And you can't see in this picture because it's far away for you, but he actually has cufflinks on. Ooh. I'm yeah. telling you, this guy is legit. Nice. He's got cufflinks. He's got a, what kind of computer is that? Adele. He's got a Dell. That's, that's a name brand With computer. Oh, he's got a clicker? So that means there's a screen offside. And what I didn't show is that there is a huge audience. They never showed the audience, but in, you could hear them and you can hear the applause, and you can hear them asking him questions. So you can tell he is in a giant stage with lots and lots of people there. So for a person who's watching this for the very first time, and they don't have any other like real experience about this kind of stuff, this looks like what? It looks legit. This guy looks really credible, scholarly, smart, French, mm -hmm. very sexy. Um, <laughs> Cool name. Hey, he's not your He doesn't pledge a the platform they're on, it could legitimize it. So if, like, they think it's on YouTube, it's got, depending on how many views, it's got watermarks. It's, got water marks. it's yeah. cool. Yeah. So in other words, look at it from the perspective of your, of your friend, how it is they see the stuff that they find on the internet. It's on the internet. It must be real, right? Okay. It's got like a 10,000 views, 100,000 views, whatever. It must be legitimate. So when they look at this video and they, they, they watch what it is, what they think that they, of that image they saw on their phone, they're coming to you now, and let's say it's the next day at work, and they say to you, hey, I watched this video. You didn't know what this thing is. I watched this video. Now, is it this? And I watched this guy, and he was telling us stuff about it, and you know what he said? He said all this other stuff. Okay, so now what is it you're going to say to your friend once you hear that they watched this video? What is the correct answer? <laughs> what is the correct answer? I would start pointing out that, wow, this really does. No, you I haven't would, seen the video. Well, I would ask them, like, Show me the video. Thank you. That is the answer. Like, show me the Can video. Can I see the video? Can I look at that? Can you send me a link? Simple answer. That is not going to harm them. It's not going to be like attacking them. I want to see what it is you're looking at. So you found this on the internet. Can I see it? And then once you've seen it, how do you respond to them? For face. She's like, no, I've actually had to do this with a Netflix documentary, actually. <laughs> Um, I would point out all the reasons why this video looks legitimate at, to them um, to confirm to them, like, I could see exactly why you think this is, you know, true after we, after we go through it and point out the watermarks and the other things and why this looks compelling and then start to ask them questions about why they, they're believing what the person's saying after we pull all that stuff out. I guess we'll make a really cool yeah. recording of this. I so. would ask the questions related to how could this person know what he says he knows? Okay. How does, how, what, what position is he in that would give him access to this information? I've had discussions with people who swear up and down that that, that, that terrorist attack in Moscow, oh, the CIA did that. Well, 
how, how do you know? How do you well, know? I have a friend in the secu- in the information in the in the uh, intelligence community. And now inside my head, I'm going, you don't have a friend in the intelligence <laughs> community. They don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly don't have friends that sit in a hot tub in Raleigh. And they certainly don't have people who are going to be spilling the beans to Well, some yeah, it's compartmentalized, and there's like four people that would know that if it did happen. And they'll have to kill you. And they'd have to kill you. So, yeah. Right, so. so it's, it's, it's about how do you feel when you see the communication um, uh, uh, you know, how, how, who is this person talking to me, and are they in a position to know? Okay, Coleman? I don't know at what point in the conversation you might do this, but I might try to say, would you be interested in looking at some contrary evidence? Very good. Okay, very good. Erica? Somewhat similarly, I would probably have first on my own Googled I'd watch the video, and then I would Google and see, is there a Wikipedia page <laughs> <laughs> that has some good information ab- that about this guy that then I can go back to the person and say, wow, that was, yeah, that was really interesting, and, um, you know, uh, you know, talk ab- about the points that the person made, and then say, um, so that got me interested, and I did a little bit more research for you, let me share with you what I found, because it was really surprising, because it turns out, blah, right. blah, whatever, blah. Whatever it was, yeah. 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 Okay. So before you inter- get a Kenny, I'm going to go to what, <laughs> so now your friend is going to tell you what, he, they're going to sum up, let's say you haven't watched the video yet, they're going to sum up that this is, this guy's a UFO person. Jacques Vallis is the guy who was supposedly uh, the, scient- was the scientist in Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He's a very famous man. He has a Wikipedia article and everything. So he's a very famous person. I know you're trying to read this. See, I can see your eyes. So he's basically saying that people who have these marks on them also have alien abductions. Mm-hmm. That was right. Yeah. So the people who've had these, because that's his focus, is alien abductions. So he says that if you have this mark on you, they will report an alien abduction. It could be years past. It could be years before the mark showed up. But they, there is a correlation that the mark on your body equals also alien abductions. So that's what the person's saying now. So you're like, okay. So how do you say to your, your friend, you say, you know, I like Erica said, I looked at your video you sent me. That was really interesting, and I have some questions. And then you say to them, could we have a, like 10 minutes away on lunch or whatever? Try to, try to take them into a situation that's not confrontational where they have to defend their, what they're saying. Because if they do that, then it's, it, you know, they circle their cognitive dissident wagons, you know. You're not going to be able, you're not, I like that phrase, isn't that great? I, like I, use, I use it a lot. I've been using it for years. So um, they, they, they're not going to listen to what you're saying. But if you do it maybe in a friendly, like, hey, I saw this video too. Let me tell you what I thought. And you f- need to find a way to allow them to save face. If you learn nothing from this workshop, you have to put it in a way like, I'm sure you would have figured this out too, but here's kind of what I found, right? And here's what I kind of think it is. So now, um, here's on Jacques Vallis's website. These are some of what is on his website are reported that people who have had these alien abductions also have the burn marks or red marks or whatever it is. This is what they look like. Okay, so when you start seeing this, you may not know what the heck it is yourselves. Has anybody, well, I don't want you to shout out. Does anybody think they know what it is who hadn't known what it was before? Don't say what it is. Penny, don't say what it is. <laughs> that looks she more said, like a yam. Said, don't, say don't say what it is. Yams are different. Okay, so, so if people, so if you're starting to see this, you're starting to think to yourself, Wow, there's patterns of these people. And then, okay, the stories start escalating on his website and his YouTube video. He starts talking about how there's aliens flying over cars and there's people taking pictures. I mean, it gets really elaborate with UFOs and you're going to yourself, how do I not cross my arms and roll my eyes? Yeah. 
first of all, don't fall into the trap of trying to fact check some hmm. arguments. Never, never do that. Look for red flags. You're looking for uh, red, red, red flags on the source. Uh, intelligence analysts will tell you that you can't possibly fact check every bit of malarkey that's floating out there. You don't. Have, you only have enough. You only have 24 hours in the day. So generally speaking, uh, uh, for something that's printed in like social media, uh, if you can't identify who's talking to you, generally that's a dead bang giveaway that, that it's a bot or it's it's a disinformation right. officer. Well, this guy. Well, this is the, he's this guy's so legit. He's got like cufflinks and everything. <laughs> so this is this is a real he's, guy. He's got years of advanced work on this this storyline that he's, he's right. So, so he has an agenda because this is his thing. He sells books. He's right. got a movie. You know, he's never all this detail, stuff. Never detail argue him because he's built up uh, ten years worth of detail that he'll tell right. you these things. Okay, so here's here, you guys ready for the solution? Everybody sitting down. Yeah. Most of you are. So what it is, is it's a burn from a hair dryer. How do you get a burn from a hair dryer in your shoulder? Do you see how long my hair is? <laughs> so one of the things I left out is that most of the people who have these burns are female. Especially female with long hair. So what's going on is that when you, women here who have used curling irons and hair dryers may know this, but when you curl your hair or you blow dry your hair, there was this thing on the hair dryers. And this isn't so much now is a thing because they have more protections on the blow dryers, you know. But they get really hot and you could zap yourself really quick and you wouldn't even remember it. You're late for work, whatever. And it didn't show until a few days later or hours later. And, and if it's covered up by your skin, you wouldn't even, I mean, like clothing, you wouldn't even notice it. And by the time you realize it, it's already forgotten. So this is the kind of thing that, that there's the answer. Now you have an answer for this person that, that makes sense, but how do you deliver this answer to the person is what's most important. Because you can't just go, you got a hair dryer? Because <laughs> it's gonna make them feel not like they, you, again, you have to bring them along and allow them to save face. So I want some examples of how you're gonna say this to the person to allow them to save face. And keep in mind, the goal is to bring them to you whenever they have a very bad situation. How can we have a respectful conversation together so that they don't feel like you're making them look stupid? Because it's hair dryers. I guess one way would be to ask them, do you think it's possible, you know, some alternative explanation like a hair dryer? Okay, that's a way, yeah. Do it a little differently. I would be like, so I did some looking, and I think I figured out what this might be, and it might relieve you that this not aliens. Like you weren't abducted by aliens, because I know you found that really, really distressing. So this is an alternative. This is a good. This is actually good news, and play into that feeling, the distress. Going that they're back having. to what he said yeah. about emotion. How do you feel yeah. about it? Maybe this. Because really and you make them part of the discovery process and show them how this can happen. You don't want them, it's like, and it's like, I, you know, it was making me distressed that you were thinking this too, but this makes me feel better. Hand it, hand it back to him, back. Uh, repeat the experiment and do it on yourself. Say, look, I did this the other night. Um, this, you know, I burned I, myself. I, I accidentally hair. burned myself and I got the same thing. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could do it together in real time. Yeah. So, my talk later is about why people believe in these kinds of things, aliens specifically. And my fear would be, and I have a friend like this, who would then come up with, how do you know that the aliens don't know that this looks like a hair dryer? And that's why they use this pattern, so they can disguise the fact that we really did a probe on you. Then I'd roll my eyes and cross my arms. <laughs> <laughs> over to, Jeff, over to him. Jeff, Jeff, over to him. Uh, a long time ago, I, I read a book, or there's a couple of similar ones, called Parent Effectiveness Training. And I just remember there was a, a strategy of, of I messages instead of you messages. Instead of you saying, you're wrong, you say, well, this is what it would seem like to me. And I just feel that this is what sort of a yeah. wide... So you ha exactly. So you need to come up with ways of saying things to the person to let them down, but make them feel like you would have found this. Oh my gosh, that was so interesting. After I watched that video, I went and did some Googling 
And I thought, oh my gosh, is this possible? And I went and looked at my hair dryer. You go look at your hair dryer and see what it looks like. And, 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 and bring them along. Like we're on a little journey together to figure out this mystery. Okay, you're in your Scooby-Doo van and you're driving around and, you're, and you've got that information yourself. So that is where you want to do it. So that's what you've got to understand is it's not about winning this argument right now. It's about winning the larger art of, uh, argument to bring them along on this discovery of learning about things, being curious about things. Don't, anybody's heard that saying, think horses, not zebras. I don't know if you heard that. It's a wonderful saying that I've heard years ago. And it's, let's come up with maybe what's kind of more possible. So yeah, people may have been, thought they were abducted by aliens, but it has nothing to do with this moment right now. So we're not having the alien discussion right now. We're having, what is that discussion? I was so curious, I figured it, I figured, I didn't figure it out, but what do you think of this idea? And then just leave it in their head so that they understand how to think this through. So that when you, when they have a very powerful, very something really important, they will come to you later with the more difficult, when they're standing at the bank teller or they're, they're about to join something that you know is a cult, they've had that discussion. So this is the article I got this from. Coleman said he read it. I hope you guys are subscribing to Skeptical Inquirer. There's amazing stuff in there. This is Mick West, who is on the front lines right now, battling the UFO community. He's so polite. He's British, so he has to be. But um, he is just, just a, such a kind person the way he does this. Um, I have been under a lot of attack by the UFO community recently but because of Wikipedia. But this guy, I read his posts and he is so, I mean, they're just flaming him. And he's just, oh, okay. You know, he's just very kind the way he responds to him. But this article is where I got all this information. It's called Hair Dryers and UFOs. I couldn't obviously show it to you in advance because then you would know what it was. But I'm just using that as an example for you guys to think about, even today, with some of the presentations you're going to be getting. Uh, Coleman's going to be giving a really interesting, um, I hope it's interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he's going to be giving a uh, talk about, uh, he'll tell you about in a minute. But I think this bleeds into it a little bit. Have some sympathy for the people in your lives who have strange beliefs. Because a lot of us came from that world. I sure did. I was terrified of spontaneous human combustion. That was the thing that scared me. But when I was growing up, we didn't have Wikipedia. We had to go to the library. And when you went to the library, all the books in there were probably sensationalized books on things. And they had black and white pictures of these people being burned. Oh my gosh. So, and if you ask somebody, they'd say, well, yeah, there was a little girl that used to live in the house before you. One day she was out riding her bike and <laughs> it came from within. So my point is to just go ahead and please have some consideration when you're having talks to these people and bring them along in the journey with us. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much.